About one year ago, uh, Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Gary Ruff had uh, directed me to stand up something we call Task Force Climate Change. And what this is, is really just a cross-cutting way across the Navy uh, to really try and understand uh, what about climate change will impact us. And the first thing we have to understand is, well, what are we trying to achieve? And what we're trying to achieve is making sure that our Navy is ready to answer any kind of tasking that will be put upon it in the 21st century. So we want to make sure that we are not impaired by climate change. So we need to understand it. We need to anticipate what those uh, potential changes would be. So we need to understand our strategy. We need to understand how we will operate and train in this environment. We need to understand to the best that the science can is what types of environments we will likely face. And then ultimately, we need to make investment decisions that factor in this changing climate or changing geography. Uh, we would prefer in the military to plan for something that doesn't happen than to be taken by surprise. A and I believe the sense, certainly in the Navy, is this is more likely than not to happen. So really, just as prudent naval officers, we want to plan for that future, understanding that nobody has perfect knowledge about the future, uh, but we believe that just to pretend that nothing is happening when you look at how the Arctic has changed, you look at sea level rise, how that has changed, you look at precipitation patterns and how they have changed, to say that nothing is changing, we believe is not responsible. And the near-term issues are really what's going on in the Arctic. I think most people know that the climate change that is being observed is happening almost twice as fast in the Arctic. Uh, we believe that within two or three decades, we could see significant times in which there was almost no ice in the Arctic. And that has huge implications, since as we all know, the Arctic is in fact an ocean. Uh, and we are at the United States Navy, so that will be an ocean that we will be called upon to, uh, to be present in that right now we're not. So that's a huge change for us. Uh, we believe we have partnership opportunities. In addition to all the challenges of climate change, uh, by having a grand challenge, if you will, that can focus all the agencies of the United States government, we can in fact do things better than we did in the 20th century. So I, I see this as, as, a, uh, as a partnership. Uh, our energy, uh, climate change and the, and the importance of, of climate change uh, for the Department of the Navy, our Secretary of the Navy, uh, Mr. Ray Mavis, has uh, put out some very ambitious goals. Uh, we want to uh, reduce our carbon footprint by 20% by the year 2020, and that is from a 2008 baseline. That's very ambitious, uh, but, uh, but that's, uh, that's a goal of our Secretary, and, uh, and that's a near-term thing. From medium term, water resource issues, how do water resources change, not only in the United States, but places like Asia, where there are many, many people, and just small changes can have huge impacts to stability of various countries. Uh, the combination of climate, water, demographics, natural resources, the interplay of all those, I think, needs to be looked at. Sea level rise is a huge issue as well. We believe sea level rise could be as much as one to two meters in the 21st century. So think of three, four, five, six, seven feet of sea level rise. Uh, just for the bases, of course, we're the Navy, so we put our bases at sea level. Uh, that will be a big challenge for us. But again, also uh, for our allies and partners overseas, this will be a, a huge, uh, huge change. And then I, I, I can't leave that question without just mentioning ocean acidification uh, and how the ecosystems will respond to the, uh, in fact, the acidification of the, of the water, because if they do not respond well, again, one billion people who today get their protein from the ocean may not be able to do that. And in the face of all the other challenges we will have on land, as our population of the world's Earth goes to about 9 billion, will be a huge challenge for us, and there will be tremendous national security implications.